Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Fredo's Masters of Trade, a webinar dedicated solely to helping growing customers build up their businesses. And uh, again, we're cutting through all the hype. We don't want to just talk in platitudes and drop the same things that you guys are reading about in every stupid single blog. We are bringing real entrepreneurs that have built real, very, very real businesses uh, and bringing them to talk with their advice. Uh, we're going to keep this short because uh, we can get this like information really, really condensed because we're bringing the people that know how to speak that way. Um, today we have an awesome guest, somebody that we've been trying a while to get on to Masters of Trade, uh, Tomer Tagrin from uh, Yatpo. So first of all, Tomer, welcome. Great to have you. Um, Thank you very Tomer, much. Tomer, Tomer Yat it's a pleasure. Um, even if you don't know the name Yatpo, and you probably do, uh, if you don't know the name, you've definitely read reviews that are being pushed out by them. Uh, it's it's kind of like a, a yellow Volkswagen Beetle, uh, like you know where you don't notice it, and suddenly you hear about them and you see them every single place. We started to see them much much more when they just raised like a massive fifty one million dollar round, uh, and the fifty one number stick in my head because I know that Oreo packages come with fifty one cookies, so there's something special about that uh, number to me. Uh, Tomer, uh, can you tell us a little bit about? what your journey has been into like building this massive company and like build like what's what's it like being like a small like small like entrepreneur that builds up something that you turn around and suddenly there's 400 people working for you like how, what, how does that work yeah so uh, i would say one by very slowly and very fast that's probably like the answer and uh, so at the beginning we started the company both uh, me and Omri Cohen, the smarter half actually and uh, both of us met at tel aviv university we finished a combined degree of electrical engineering and computer science and then based on a very bad personal shopping experience we said okay like the review space is something that we think needs a massive change <clears throat> and then we spent like the first few years of the company just really thinking a lot about what's the perfect experience to generate content from customers how do you get people to write reviews uh, and we obsessively talked on skype with like hundreds of eBay, Amazon, Best Buy, Macy's, Sears, top reviewers, trying to understand what incentivized them to write reviews, what's broken in the experience. And, and then what we did is we completely changed the experience. I don't get into our platform, but like mobile capabilities, data capabilities, et cetera, et cetera. And, and then we found, we said, okay, how are we gonna distribute the, the product? And we found like at the time, a small platform called Shopify, where they had, uh, they had like a really cool API. We were basically debating which platform because we were like engineers. Uh, we went on, we didn't think, we didn't know what marketing is. So we said, let's just develop the platform that we think is easy to develop. And Shopify had the best documentation of their API. Um, and we just developed on Shopify and we really took off. And then we started to develop it to like Magento, BigCommerce, Demandware, Hybris, like every platform, WooCommerce that makes sense. And since then, we really expanded and said, okay, what else do you do with the content besides putting it on site after we were able to generate so much content? So we partner with like the Facebook, the Instagram, the Googler, the Twitter to help companies basically market themselves using that content. And then we also expanded to <clears throat> different types of content like a Q and A, photos, soon videos. And what we also learned that's interesting is like in an omni-channel way, we're now expanding it if, if you look at like how we generate content, how we started, it was mainly emails. Now we look at it in a much more omni-channel way. So bots, SMS, offline transaction. So we really look at it in every touch point that you have with your customers, how you can leverage that to generate more content. And so that's something that we completely also, it's now changing. And I would say like in terms of people, uh, like we were always the type of entrepreneurs that said, okay, let's move fast, let's try things. and fix it and learn as we go so i think till today our biggest capability as a company is to learn and to adapt and to change really really fast and, and that also comes when you like adding more people and, and i remember the beginning the joke that we had is that when we interviewed so the first like i think 10 15 people were just engineers and, and engineers and one community person and one support person actually and we said okay <clears throat> We didn't even know that you need to interview on culture. We interview just on skills. And then when we fired people, we said like, why did you fire them? No, yeah. and we had like an internal debate talking about that. You know what, in an interview, you also need to look at stuff like character and what is culture, et cetera. And we quickly learned how to adapt to that and to put like, 
okay, the Yotpo code of culture, what's important for us in people, and to really put the infrastructure that will enable us to scale as an organization. Uh, yes. I, I don't think we did the best job in it, to be honest, but we did a pretty good job. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, just from the outside, it looks like you guys are doing a pretty bang up job. Uh, there's two things that were really interesting in, in the first part of what you're talking about that I actually think have a ton of impact on, on our users, like people that are importing or manufacturing their own goods. Uh, one thing is just being really close to the users. Uh, you said you were like jumping on Skype calls with reviewers and just, just like really finding them out and, and figuring out exactly who they are and what they're looking for and what they do. Uh, just like out of curiosity, how do you how do you find, what's the process for finding like a Macy's top reviewer? Like you're just looking through the website, finding the names and finding them on Facebook? Like how do you do that? So it's a horrible, horrible experience, but I can tell you how we did that. I don't know if it's the smartest process, but what we did is Amazon has a leaderboard of Amazon top review, that's how we started. And then you, you look at the nicknames, and then we search the nicknames on Twitter and Skype. And we just like called ping everyone with that nickname. And, and from like 10,000 people that we sent, like 300 people were willing to get on the phone with us. So we interviewed like 300, 400 people, and mainly through Skype and Twitter. Actually, that was the point of contact. It was based initially on Amazon leaderboard of like the Amazon top reviewers. They have like a dedicated leaderboard uh, with nicknames to that. So that's what we did. A Twitter interview, a Twitter view. I love it. Um, so, so that was one thing that like I, I really liked in the first part that you're talking about. And and the second thing is that, and this is kind of like very Airbnb esque that. For marketing, you just found platforms that you can scale on, right? You said like Shopify is the best API, and I'm writing down to tell our API guy to improve his documentation so that next time somebody goes out to find the platform, they use us. Um, I think for a lot of our sellers, a lot of people that are using Fredos, uh, they look out at what platforms, what APIs can they use to scale, and their go-to solution is Amazon, right? Like Amazon is where e-commerce sellers go, and, and you just you suddenly hit like these huge markets. Um, what is it, and I guess bringing it back to the review space specifically, what do you think it is about Amazon and the way that they leverage their reviews and the way that's become such an integral part of their ecosystem? What is it about Amazon and what they've done that's really helped them scale so much? Whew. So actually, yeah. just, just to understand, uh, like internally, we talk about like helping brands compete in a post-Amazon world. So we think Amazon is pretty much is doing and will do to commerce what Facebook did to the publishing world, meaning that 10 years from the day, there's gonna be Amazon and the rest. And we mm -hmm. spend a lot of time thinking about what's gonna be Amazon and what's gonna be the rest. And for us, the rest is gonna be like the future of commerce for us is brand commerce. I don't wanna get into that too much, but I think Amazon just executed on every front phenomenally well. And uh, so let's look just on user generated content. Till today, in commodity products, 66% of consumers go to Amazon to read reviews, Q&A, photos before they buy, no matter where they buy. So yeah, Amazon is becoming yeah, like more, content hub. Yeah, I'm yeah. guilty. Amazon right. is becoming like the content hub where consumers are going to do research. Right. How they did that, because <clears throat> they understood very early on, actually in the 90s, the importance of like community and like community-driven commerce, the fact that you need to be very close, like their mission is to be the most customer-centric company in the world. And part of it is to be like putting the customer voice out there and being super transparent. Now it's so and so, but when they started, and, and user generated content is probably like the holy grail of that. Like mm -hmm. put what your customer is saying out there. Right. And, and they understood it's like a, it's a very long term commitment uh, to do that. They and Amazon are very good in long term commitments. And, and just like flawless execution and user generated content, like, I would say like they educated the world, like the importance. And they gave like consumer expectation and what is the le how consumers buy today. So I think in user generated content, that's why. And I think Amazon, as we see it, and I think for your customers as well, like you cannot ignore Amazon, of course, right? right? They are probably the, the biggest driving force in commerce and in retail. But you got to understand that if you solely lean on Amazon, you will be in a problem. So if I would like one of your customers, I would definitely think how I'm scaling on Amazon. But I am scaling outside of Amazon because right. this is a company that proved time and time again that they're not afraid to take your business if they think it's like a successful business. Right. Yeah, I think that, that that's, a, that's a really interesting point. One, one question before we move on to, okay, what do we do in the post-Amazon world? You were jumping on the phone. You said like you're jumping on the phone with these people on Amazon review leaderboards. And I imagine to get to the Amazon leaderboard, you need to be putting out a lot of reviews, right? 
how like, right because there's a lot of people that are on Amazon reviewing. How how proud were those people that they were on the leaderboard? Was that like something that was really important to them? Yeah. So so what when back in the days when we said okay, what are the root causes that people are actually on the leaderboard? Why people write reviews? There are like three main reasons. Mm -hmm. One is people that had like a really good experience with a product or a really bad experience with a product. So the only thing they just want to put like the experience out there, like because they are so passionate, all for the good, all for the bad. And right. So that's one main reason. For the leaderboard, actually, the main main reason is like you're saying recognition. There are people that really care about that recognition, and the fact that they are on Amazon leaderboard is like a thing for them. They put it on their bio, they put it on their CV. Like it's a big, so. big thing for them. <laughs> and the third reason is just people that I would say like that's what they do. You can like they are the 0.001 percent of the world. They're just like passionate about writing reviews. They have spare time. That's what they do in life. So you mm -hmm. also have those types of people. But I would say the vast majority is recognition and a really strong experience with a product, all for the better, all for the worse. Okay, great. And then that, I, like taking that and then shifting into the post Amazon world and start and and we're speak we're speaking uh, as it so happens the, the different people that we've been speaking to around this specific episode we're speaking to uh, Chad Rubin from Scubana, which is all about you know like multi platform. We've been speaking to a bunch of different uh, platforms that focus on on the post Amazon world, right? Or, or kind of hedging your bet against Amazon. Uh, what direction do you think that's moving in? Like where where do you feel like people should be? On their own assets, selling on other platforms. You know, what do you think for an yeah. e-commerce vendor? Uh, where do you think they need to be down the line? Yeah. So I actually had a very interesting conversation. We had like a committee of a few. Like uh, I won't mention them by name, but think about like the the top line people in commerce today, from like the Facebooks of the world to the Shopify's of the world to like really really advanced people. And it's clear a few things are very very clear. One, it's clear that People that sell third-party products are in a problem because mm -hmm. Amazon is going like the Amazon private label and right. the fact that retailers are dying and you're basically going to sell inside Amazon. So on that, you need to be, if you are selling third-party products, you need to be very good inside the Amazon ecosystem because that's what's going to be in commodity product, just Amazon. Everything mm -hmm. else will die. <clears throat> maybe Walmart, but Amazon, Walmart, maybe another like retailer and that's it. What's happening to Sears, to Toys R Us will continue happening. So it's right. very, very clear that you need to be very, very good inside the Amazon ecosystem. And the other thing that's very, very clear is that if you really want to build like a enormous business or to really succeed in that world, you got to build like you got to sell your own products. That's one. And you got to sell them direct, meaning yeah. you got to create some kind of differentiation of what you're selling in Amazon in your direct channel. So you have to build like your own brand. An experience that consumers care about, an experience that consumers talk about, and therefore to reach positive unit economics on scale. So we generally believe that the most important thing that you need to do today is build your brand. <clears throat> that's crucial for your survival uh, 10 years from today, and that's crucial for your growth today. So mm -hmm. marketers, uh, entrepreneurs, CEOs, they have to understand that you have to build your front like direct to consumer no matter what. <clears throat> There's a famous article by the CMO of Reebok, I think, lately, that said they know that they're losing money on the direct-to-consumer now, but it's just like essential for their survival in the future. Because mm -hmm. if they locked by the Amazon screen and they won't have like data on the consumer, no, <clears throat> and think about like a voice. In a voice world, it's even scarier when I'm going to Alexa and I'm telling Ale Alexa buy me shoes. Alexa doesn't ask me if I need if I want like Nike shoes or Reebok shoes. Right itself so the brand doesn't exist on the voice interface and that's a very very scary world so right. the brand build is the most important thing companies to do today this is what we are obsessed of this is what we are trying to do in Yotpo to help companies building a brand through their community <clears throat> and, and we think that's the only way that you can do it, build your brand this is why like we are and internally like every all hands meeting I am giving like uh, from the ecom news a section and it's usually talking about the steps that Amazon is doing to eliminate brands in the mm -hmm. world and how brands should compete and change that. So, so <laughs> I mean, if you're if you're predominantly an, an Amazon seller right now, 
Right. How do you, and you, you mentioned before, Facebook and publishers, right, where, where suddenly Facebook turns off the tap. Uh, if you're an Amazon seller right now, how do you recover your bread, right? Because you already have assets in terms of user reviews on Amazon. Can, yep. you, can, you, can you gain any of that credibility that you built up on Amazon? Is there any way to replicate that success and take it off Amazon and build it on your own platform? Or do you have to start from scratch when you like leave Amazon? Yeah, so, so I, I, I'm not sure it's a binary world. I'm not thinking that you need to stop selling on Amazon. I need, I think you need to like today go open a Shopify store, a big commerce store, a Magento store, it doesn't matter, and start building that brand, <clears throat> start having that communication, that community on your online asset, start understanding who are your customers, how are they getting to you, what makes like retention higher from one customer to another, what are they saying about your product, what are they saying about the experience, like, do it today, this morning, because if not, you're in a big, big problem. <clears throat> and besides that, just get better in, in Amazon. Like I think, again, it's not, a, for me, the future 10 years from now, it's not brands that are selling all on Amazon or not on Amazon, it's probably doing both. So if you're just very, very good in one of them, it's a problem, start doing the other, because that's where the future is at. Okay, and then before we jump into the tips that, that, you, that you prepared, uh, and, and this, I think, was, was great for us, that there's some people that just build a company and talk about stuff they don't necessarily know about. Tomer, actually, uh, you, you've created your own product, right? Like a, a Chinese hacky sack or something, uh, and you, like, private labeled it, manufactured it, imported it. Uh, what lessons, I mean, I guess, like, first tell us, like, what was it that you created? And then what are the lessons that you learned there that shape how you deal with e-commerce and how you support e-commerce uh, businesses today? Yeah. So actually, I was an importer uh, when I was uh, uh, learning, uh, like my degree in Tel Aviv University. We had like a strike for the first year, and then I got a little bit bored. Said, okay, what I need to do? And one of my friends uh, that was visiting in uh, China had like a phenomenal game. He brought it a few pieces, <clears throat> and then we said, you know what? It actually makes sense to bring it to Israel. So I founded a company and used my money, my parents' money and just bought, like, designed, like, the game for Israel and in packages imported from China and start selling it through retailers. And actually, we had, like, 300 selling points at the tops, and we actually sold every piece of the game. It was for kids. That It's, like, soccer with, like, feathers, et cetera, et cetera. And so... I learned on that a few things. One is China is changing the game in terms of like products. So China, China is a big force. Till today, I think the most successful, by the way, app on uh, Shopify is like, uh, how it's called, I forgot the name, like drop shipping from Ali that you don't need to own the product. Mm -hmm. So that is changing right. the game. <clears throat> Second, I learned that the quality of your product is really, really important. So you need to really, really understand like where your product is good, where it's bad, what you need to improve. And the third thing is like the power of the community. Like it's so, so important what people are saying about your brand, about your product, that you got to nail that. Because if you got that wrong, you cannot survive. And I don't care how much money you have to spend on online advertising, on email marketing, on TV commercial, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> There's a famous sentence that too many startups or e-commerce companies are dying while uh, making uh, Google and Facebook very, very wealthy. Right. So right. you need to nail your product, your community very, very quickly early on. And so that was like a phenomenal experience. It also really helped me on how to, like, how to be better in sales as an engineer and a computer science grad. So now I'm actually like, I have a strong passion for sales. I love sales. Mm -hmm. And selling not just for customers, to partners, to employees, to investors. And so I think that also taught me like, a lot on like the verbal communication and the importance of mm -hmm. having those like personal relationships. And that's also very, very important. And so it was just like a phenomenal experience right. and that I could not be more happy with. Awesome. Awesome. And even, you, at some point, you switched over that. Wasn't, yeah, it, it wasn't the most successful business. We finished up like break even, like a little bit profitable, but it was more about like the experience was phenomenal, not as a business. It actually wasn't like the best business in the world. Right. All right, but you came away with uh, education, which is a whole lot more than, uh, you probably pay a whole lot more for that actual education. Cool, so Tomer, we, we asked yeah. you to prep a couple of like pieces of advice for people that are going their businesses now. 
Uh, why, why don't you walk us through like two or three of, of the big tips that you would give people if they're trying to build a business? Yeah, so just to give context, we've been fortunate enough uh, to work with like thousands of brands, like the up and coming brands of the world, the Away, the Chubbies, the Lisa, the Alalas of the world, like all those digital native, high brand that's going from like zero to dozens of millions to hundreds of millions. And we've been fortunate to have a front row seat to understand what those marketers are doing, what those companies are doing. So the first thing is that they really care about their customers. <clears throat> so I know this is like very obvious, but it's, it's very hard to do when you're trying to survive and grow in the commerce world, but they really care about their customers, meaning like they're obsessed with stuff like NPS, reading the reviews, uh, getting like community signals. They have like Facebook groups, WhatsApp groups at the beginning. Some of them started as like blogs, <clears throat> like really nurturing the community, like nailing the community first. So I cannot emphasize the importance because you cannot build a business today just on finding a hack on Facebook ads or SEO. It won't work. Prices are too expensive. PPC prices are continuing to mm -hmm. <clears throat> increase. So you got to nail your community first. That's like the most important thing you can do. Second, I would say is think as a process and that means like constant improvement. So constant, you need to like get customers, get their, uh, I want to say their experiences. Then I would even say market yourself through those experiences on like, so for example, instead of just doing Facebook ads and saying like, hey, buy my product, say stuff like, hey, look what the real person that is relevant to you is saying about that product. So using that community inside like social advertising, search advertising, email marketing, everywhere you can. And number three is really understand what you need to change and to improve. So mm -hmm. is it your site experience, is it the product, is it the shipping? Like what do you need to improve? So I think for every business that's selling direct to consumer, that cycle of getting customers' experiences, marketing through customers' experiences, understanding from those experiences what you need to, to improve and do it that cycle again and again and again and again, that's how you grow in life. That's very, 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 very important. And the second piece I, I would say is, yes, Amazon and understanding that you need to do both. It's not mm -hmm. a question anymore of doing just on Amazon or just outside of Amazon. You have to do both. You don't have any other choice. That's where the world is going to. And unless, I don't know, the regulators or the DOJ will break Amazon apart, that's very likely maybe, but until that's yeah. going to happen, you have to do both. And, and like, you cannot ignore the direct, the importance of direct, and you cannot ignore the importance of Amazon. And mm -hmm. so that's the second thing you got to nail. And the third one, I would say as marketing is becoming harder and harder, and as PPC prices are getting uh, bigger and bigger, especially because <clears throat> Google and Facebook continue to be like the the dominant player, right. players of the world. So people will continue to increase, for example, what's happening with Google Shopping and what Facebook is doing. That's very, very obvious. So, and by the way, when I mean Facebook, I mean Instagram included. So <clears throat> as that world seems that there isn't any change, the next piece means you got to be very, very good in conversion rate and retention. So mm -hmm. more and more of the focus will be to conversion rate and retention because there's so much you can do now on acquisition as that's becoming like a limited source unless you have like hundreds of millions of dollars to spend. So how does a, so, how does a ra rather than a, a SaaS company, how does a product focused company double down on retention? Like what, what, are, the, what are the strategies? Like, how would you recommend a company yeah, like that so, do? You know, so what we're seeing on the best brands, it's actually, it's, it's beautiful to see it's combined. So if you want to double down on retention, the first thing you need to do is understand your customers. So mm -hmm. you need to ask them, you need to analyze that content, understanding, hey, what's good and what's bad? Mm -hmm. That's like, and now to piggyback to Yotpo, for example, like we haven't launched it, but the product that's now in beta, we're launching like a product that does exactly that, on scale, sentiment analysis of your reviews, of your help desk, no matter mm -hmm. what, that analyze and actually gives you, you know, your return customers are saying X, but your and your repeat shoppers, sorry, are saying X, but first time shoppers are saying Y, and this is what you need to change. <clears throat> so for example, what's your Ohio customer saying on shipping versus your New York customer saying on shipping. So mm -hmm. I think that's very, very important. First step is to understand your community. And second, in a very iterative process to be committed to that 
and changing what you need to change in order to improve that. So it can be on your product, it can be on your site experience, it can be on your shipping, it can be on your prices, it doesn't matter. But you need to find a way and a very methodical way to improve your offering, your experience based on what your customers are saying because loyalty is dying. The only thing that customers are loyal now is to the experience. And experience means end-to-end, from on-site, to price, to user-generated content, to shipping, to everything. That's the experience. So it's, it's very, very hard to name, but you are very committed to that. There's a very methodical way to do that. So I guess going, going back to your, to your first uh, your first tip, what's your favorite example of how uh, one of your companies, that you, like one of the companies that use Yotpo, uh, how they showcase their like user generated content? Like what, what is like the coolest, yeah. most innovative way that you've seen them use like user, user content? Yeah, so actually it's, uh, I'll give one of our customers, Lisa, Lisa is considered to be till today the fastest growing kind of company on the Shopify platform that was ever founded, going from zero to hundreds of millions of dollars in like just a few years. And Lisa is, I want to say now the second largest online mattresses company in the United States. <clears throat> and for them, what we did with them that was super, super cool, they did some like gala nights in the city in New York. And they took the photos, the reviews, the question answered, and they printed it on the walls. So when you are coming to their store, you see like the user generated content is printed massively on like the walls. It's just beautiful how they put the customers out there. When they did like a TV commercial, 50% of the TV commercial is just showing what customers are saying about them. So they are obsessed about it. And it was just like beautiful to see how they're such like community driven. How the sign saying, you know what? Forget what we are saying about us. See what other real people are saying about us. And in everywhere, on the offline TV commercial, and of course, like email marketing ads. That's like the easy part. Yeah, I love it. That, there's there's a very similar thing that we that uh, that a bunch of companies I know have run from a marketing perspective, where you ask users to describe your part your platform, and then you use that as your header on your website, right? Just like giving them the showcase, and a Apple also did a great jo great job with that, using pictures from their iPhone, right, for their campaign, so I love that. Any other really cool ideas of like how people have used it, maybe in social? Is it just like putting up like ongoing streams of content created by users? Like any other? Yeah, like, really so another cool, cool way, another cool way is uh, like we integrated with a few email marketing companies, so think about when you're doing even like cart abandonment emails or newsletters, <clears throat> we can now type the relevant user-generated content, the relevant photos, the relevant reviews, some of the relevant videos, like, so let's say you put a product on, your, on the card and then you abandon it, I can show you for the product what, like, people that are relevant for you, what they said about the product. And that we learned, like, really, really dramatically improve, like, the CTR on card abandonment emails. And that was very, very cool to see and learn that it's actually working that way. Okay. And I guess one thing that comes to mind, right, for our users that are selling, whether on Amazon or on multi-channel, how do you clear that hurdle of getting your users to actually come back and leave the reviews, right? Because there's a huge drop off right there. How do you, how do you craft yeah. that? Yeah, so none of them are uh, coming back. You need to proactively ask them. And what we learned is that if you buy a mattress online, it's really, like, you need much more time to experience with the product versus if you buy, like, sneakers online. <laughs> so what we do is, A, we use the data to knowing when to engage with your customers. So time after the product was delivered, and we learned that East Coasters are different from West Coasters. So if you need to ask in the morning, weekends, work days, et cetera, men are different from women. If I bought like five different products, should you ask for one product, three products, five products? So all of that taking into consideration into our models and into our machines. So even we change the text of the, of the email. And <clears throat> so that's one second is we made the email like mobile first one step experience. So instead of like, Usually what happens is you get an email, you need to open it, click on a link, sign in, right. fill up a very long form that's not mobile compatible. We develop a technology called email review. So the review is given directly inside email. So we took those four or five steps into one step mobile first tablet compatible experience. When you combine that <clears throat> with like data and knowing how and when to engage with your customers, you're gonna get content explosion. And then we enhance that to, okay, someone didn't answer in an email, maybe let's use a bot on Facebook on Messenger, maybe use like SMS. And mm -hmm. so those types of things. So it's an omni-channel using a lot of data and a lot of like a frictionless experience. 
Wow. So, and I think this is actually a great, a great segue into just like telling us what exactly do, do, does uh, Yotpo do and how can you help our customers and users? Yeah. So usually what Yotpo does is Yotpo helps brands uh, to fight in the post Amazon world by leveraging the community. Uh, we're helping them generate content from their community that we think that's the backbone of any community signal. So stuff like we started with reviews, then expanded to community Q&A, now we're doing like user generated photos and later this year we're going to do user generated videos and then <clears throat> after we're collecting in a very smart way all of that content we partner with like the shopify the magento the google the facebook the twitter the instagram the pinterest the email marketing companies of the world to help you market yourself using that content in email marketing on site social marketing paid and unpaid mm -hmm. search marketing paid and unpaid and in the backbone, we also help you understand that content and what you need to change at your business. So it's like literally how you can be like a community-driven commerce business by having like the most robust platform to help you gather a customer content and use that content in any marketing channel that you want and also what you need to improve based on what your community are saying. Insane. Awesome. Well, uh, definitely head over to yapo.com, check it out. Uh, you know, I've, I've played around with it. It looks incredible. Uh, and I've definitely encountered millions of reviews from there. Uh, Tomer, thank you so much for your time. This was incredibly informative. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, and, and for everybody else, uh, be sure to uh, tune in again. We'll be having some really, really great podcasts coming up. People from Scubano, from Wix, some awesome companies. Uh, so thank you. And until next time, uh, uh, smooth sailing and have a great day.